Bonjour, this is JCB Live Wine Style. This is a very exciting day for all the lovers of surrealism. Today is May 11. Imagine when 1904 Salvatore Dali was born, my favorite artist of all time. I'm having a toast to wish him a happy birthday. My life is surrounded, felt, inspired by surrealism. In fact, my favorite quote of Salvatore Dali is the following. There's only one difference between a madman and me. The madman thinks he's sane. I know I'm mad. This is a fabulous way to live your life, to continuously feel inspired, to always be creative, and to look at the world in a very different way. So let's start today by creating one of Dali's favorite, most compelling, May West inspired lips. Come next to me and I'll start the lips. So we're gonna start with the lips. Why the lips? The most seductive, the most voluptuous, the most inviting, and the one who makes you think of the kiss. And very importantly as well, the one who are welcoming the elixir of God. So I'm going to do my favorite lips, inspired by Dali, Genus Kiss. So why Genus Kiss is so important? Because it makes you think of the little diamond in the mouth. What is diamond? It's the most radiant, the most beautiful, the most celebrated mineral coming from the earth. We could have done caviar, but it's so nice to have diamonds as well, you see, melting. And we only starting, we'll be back later. I'm thinking of pink lips. Dali did red, which we designed a beautiful piece of jewelry from it. We'll be back in a few moments to show you more about the famous lips. Dali did an incredible sofa that you'll see shortly, made of lips, a bedroom, and of course, created something absolutely magical from the lips that are meant to really represent the overlay of life. What an amazing time with Salvatore Dali. He inspired me to think about a new signature for myself. As always, inspired by love, this will be in red, the C, which is going through, this is love. This is, of course, a beautiful body, as you can imagine. You know where we are here. We're looking at it, of course, from behind. And then the B, which is hanging here, with the famous I from Dali. And we'll go in a series of four, because there's a lot of symbolism into this. So this is my new signature. We will, of course, paint in red. We will, of course, add some light blue here, a little blue there, and here it is. And here it is, the birth of surrealism in my own life or the continuity of surrealism in my life. The kiss, of course. Another version of the kiss. The kiss with a little tongue. The five senses. And of course, the passionate kiss. the symbol of transformation. The idea, dear friends, of surrealism. The idea of being who you're not and wanting to be who you never thought you could be. The way you look at the world in a very different way. We all look at the world in a different way. This is all in our eyes. The frame is here to guide us. What is inside is what we decide to see. 
Right, Stephanie? Yes, but what I want to know is I have an empty glass here, and when do we get to talk about the wine? This is the symbol of transformation. This is the illusion of champagne in the world of Burgundy. This is JCB69. You think it's champagne. It's better than champagne. It outperforms champagne. As Dali used to say, the biggest pleasure I have every day is to get up as Salvatore Dali. As Jean Charles, the biggest pleasure I have is to make you feel this is the best of the best as it is, without you knowing that it is. So Stephanie, are we ready to celebrate? Yes! Dali's birthday, yes! Woo! Look at that. Who do you have on your beautiful? I have baby girl. Isn't she? She is on my lap. I'm doing my little impression of Goldfinger right here, but she's on my lap. So, cheers. Always look at the person. Cheers. Dear friends, welcome to the world of surrealism. This is JCB69 that proves Ooh, baby, that like everything it. is possible in this world. I know this is your dog because she likes the... She likes <laughs> Pinot Noir. That shows us that Pinot Noir can be the ultimate wine for bubbles. This is our JCB69. Whichever way you look at the six, at the nine, it's your own interpretation of where you want to be, what you want to do, what those numbers make you think. You don't want to get too close to 666. You don't want to get too close to 999. The two together create the best. I was born almost half a century, a little more after Salvatore Dali, who would be today almost 116 years old. And why did I come up as a swan? That's this a good question. That's what I want to know. My most favorite, most beautiful, animal of all time. Look at the beauty of this bird, symbolizing loyalty, faithfulness, love. According to the Indians, the bird that can actually separate the water to the milk. So I would like to know if you could separate the water to the wine. Well, I create water from wine, or wine from water. And you know there's a lot of water in wine. So, surrealism. Stephanie is sitting on the most fabulous lips I was drawing that inspired me to create Gina's lips that I'm wearing today for all of us. Why the lips? Because this is the ultimate place where we direct the glass to enter the inner self. This is where we allow the penetration of the liquid to inspire us and to take us to the new dimension. So this is why I thought I would dream to be a peacock or a swan. The swan because when I arrived to America on my little boat, I arrived on water. Hence the idea of this little boat, very humble, with this French flag. The idea of the egg, Stephanie. Yes, I'm listening. Symbolizes the thought of transformation. The transformation of hills and dry landscapes. That is my favorite view, as you could see. An enhanced idea of the eye or the mask, similar to Franco the other day, the Phantom of the Opera, that really shows you a different palettes of birth. The two cypress, the entrance of Wapo Hill, going in to the views and seeing that everything is possible. And today's surrealism show us that the way the world is, or the way we told the world is, is not necessarily the way we perceive the world. So who is to say that my friend, she cannot fly higher than the birds? The birds are looking up to Frenchie, and Frenchie is helping the birds to transform. Would it be great to have a Frenchie with long legs that can really go beyond boundaries, as he does. You could see here, Stephanie, your beautiful hair, the symbol of femininity, the cathedral of love. You see the pillars that you climb. One symbolizes Honoré Joséphine, the other one, 
grâce à Antoinette. The two typhonic inspiration of our life and Gina of course at the middle representing femininity and all the ideas that a woman holds together in a very atomic fashion. Of course you will realize the last supper table just with one guest the bread the water which is being converted into wine naturally of course what else and Cabernet grapes. Now that's cereal coming from a Burgundian. For sure, but in Napa <laughs> Valley. And look, what does it make you think? Isn't it all the flavors you find in the wines? Yes. Cherry. I'm not sure about apple and Cabernet, but the cherries, yes. And plum and raspberries and strawberries. And who is safeguarding the cathedral? Oh, that looks like a lion. Indeed, indeed. I'm not sure and if I ever know. Who's that. better than Stephanie's hair to symbolize <laughs> the tigress, the lioness <laughs> of the jungle? And there you could see the octagonal shape drawings that attracts and ties the energy together. And of course, the protection of the infinite line of earth and sea and air together. So all the elements are here to represent the ultimate joy of life with a door that if you get in, you have access to this amazing imagination. Maybe the only thing missing is cheese. But we'll get to taste that later today. Well, that's good. What about this last panel on the triptych? Ah, the last one will go I believe very well with the Merlot. Oh, is it finally time for my wine? Well, not yet. I think we should <laughs> sit down and have a conversation. The sound of crystal. Don't you always drink out of crystal? If I recall since the age of... Four. <laughs> what a I think it's younger every time. <laughs> but yes, I was very fortunate enough to grow up with a uh, Bacchus crystal. So, Stephanie, how does it feel to be sitting on lips with a beautiful red scarf and a dog on you that you're petting? A little odd. <laughs> Isn't oddness comfortable, though? It's very surrealistic to be sitting here with you with a dog on my lap. I'm not going to lie. And enjoying bubbles. And enjoying bubbles. What a life. What this a life. is surrealistic. Yes. So, Stephanie, you represent surrealism in many ways. Because if we look at the realistic world of Napa Valley, as early as 1974, 1980, 1985, 1990 even for that matter, there was not so much powerful, talented ladies in the world of wine. So how did you get there? That's very true. I, when I started out, there were, there, there were one or two female winemakers, but not nearly as many as they are today. So I would like to think that I represent what is possible to not only everyone today, but to the future as well. So we got to raise our glass to looking at the world in a very different way. Did you always look at the world from a different prism than most? I did, although my prism was really, I wanted to be an FBI agent. <laughs> that, that, That's that would, very realistic. That would make you nervous. <laughs> and then what changed the course? And then apparently there was a height requirement, who knew? And even on a good hair day, I'm not quite that tall. So I had to be realistic for a small moment and decide that while I was not going to get any taller, I could choose to lead a path and for, to help all future female winemakers out in Napa Valley. Aha, uh -huh. I love that. So I'm going to walk at your height. <laughs> Of baby girl. I'm, oh, wait, wait, I'm a little bit taller than that, oh, just good. so you so know. I'm go so, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit easier. Are you going to finally get to the wine that I have? Well, to Well, now I want you to tell me Ooh. what is so surrealistic about this beautiful well, label there's two as I'm going to serve you the Because wine. I think that it's a stunning package. Thank you very much. The velvet, everyone expects bottles of wine to come with a boring paper label. But why do something that's boring? Why just why not do something that's extraordinary? And that velvet label I know you is, like to is, pet is, and is, caress. Is, yes, I'm clearly liking to pet and press. I mean it's a stunning and I encourage everyone to touch this. 
But one of the other things that I love about this wine and why I would consider this one to be cerealistic is that it's Merlot. And everyone thinks that a Merlot from Napa has to be a little softer, a little blander, maybe even what I'll say insipid, just boring. But our Merlot is, is almost like a Cabernet. So it's cerealistic in that, in that regard. Why, why not do something different? Why not get everyone's attention by making it. a powerful Rutherford-based Merlot? And is it because it's from Rutherford that it's so powerful? It, it is entirely because it's from Rutherford. Rutherford is known for having those firmer tannins, more structure to it. And you think of that with Cabernet, that's what everyone thinks about, but it's Merlot. So it's the terroir of Rutherford coming out, despite the varietal, coming out into the Merlot. So I think this is their cerealistic wine. I know you like touching, but what about tasting as well? What about tasting? Wow. I got a bigger point. The sound of crystal, ladies and gentlemen, like the bells of St. Patrick's in New York, St. Paul in London, Notre Dame in Paris, and of course, Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. Mm. Well, going along with that cerealistic um, mm. theme, you would expect Merlot to have all kinds of certain fruits, but this again comes across as having more coffee, and it's really surreal for you for me to be sitting here and you standing and, and looking at me like that. Well, and baby girl <laughs> keeps looking as well as yeah. you at this picture. <laughs> Is she afraid of those amazing oh, tigers? Baby girl, are you tired and scared of this? This wine makes me think of this surrealistic image reinterpreted from a famous painting where Salvador Dali had his wife laying on ice as is and contemplating the evolution of time. So many of you think of it as one world. I love the idea of unity. I personally adore the idea that we live in one world. Irrelevant of your skin color, your religion, your belongings, your social status, and where you're from, we all are here together to be brothers and sisters and have an amazing time together as life is a theater. Here, you have the symbol of many religions, the pomegranate, mm -hmm. the fish, and of course, the tiger. The idea is to associate three of the most powerful religions, Judaism, Catholicism, and Buddhism, into one piece where whichever the orientation is, you could survive, you could grow, and you are blossoming in your world of ideas. Because ideas is what makes the world go around. No war, make love. You know, that's what it's all about. And we wanted a landscape which was in the middle of the ocean, the association of warmth, and cold, the association of North Pole, South Pole, and the association of on one canvas, we can represent one world. Of course, today, Stephanie, this is the day of peonies. Uh, my favorite flower. Me too. I love peonies. I'm delighted mm, today beautiful fragrance. to offer uh, oh, to you, well, thank you very much. the peonies as long as you do something for me tonight. When you're going to be laying on your bed, I know you love silk sheets, and I know you love fur and feathers. You will be drawing your vision of the peonies together. And you'll give me the drawing in the morning <laughs> as we're tasting and creating more wines together. Do I have a yes? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Dear friends, this is so exciting to see you again on JCB Live Wine Styles. We cannot wait to spend more time with you tomorrow. This was JCB 69, Cremant de Bourgogne and Raymond Napa Valley Reserve Merlot. Surrealistically great. <laughs>